Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this cool text behind a person or object effect as seen featured throughout this year's YouTube Rewind. I'm going to show you with this example a few ways that you can do it in Premiere Pro or After Effects. So we'll start off with the easiest approach. This is only going to work for some clips if it's very suitable. In this case, you see she's wearing completely red. There's a good bit of contrast between her and the background and she's not moving too much in this first portion. You can head to the effects control panel and find an effect called paint bucket or paint bucket fill. It should be under the generate video effects folder. If I drag this onto my clip, you'll see that it'll act like it's clicking a paint bucket right on one point of the, the image. If I'm working in my program window and I highlight the effect, you'll actually be able to see the little cursor. By default, it's in the center, but you can move it around. So this kind of could act like a quick selection tool. You see, I'm getting a pretty good selection of her body just from here. And keep in mind, you're just putting the text on one portion. So you don't necessarily have to make it perfectly masked out from top to bottom. Before we continue, I'm going to also add a text layer. So I'll click my type tool, make sure I'm on the program window or click on the timeline so you see the text cursor appear. And I can click and type out whatever I want. So you should see this text appear on a new layer. You can drag it on top. And if it, you head over to the essential graphics panel, you can also center or move or align this text wherever you want. But with that text there in frame, so we can see what's going on, let's click back on our layer, keep working with our paint bucket effect, because right now it's just filling it with red. But if we head to the blending mode, we can make it stencil alpha that'll act like a mask. So I'm actually going to drag this layer on top of the text effect. And then we want to fill the background back in with what it was. So I'm going to duplicate that same layer, but kind of sandwich it in between the text, except on the background layer, I could just delete any effect. So now I have on the top layer, her, and then the text, and then the background. So you see this works really well on this still frame, but there's a problem when we start moving too much, unless your clip is quite perfect or not too much movement, you might get some interference. The paint bucket tool isn't going to do its best job. You can try to adjust the tolerance lower or higher on the paint bucket tool, or also move the fill point to different shades of, of the red or parts of the image. And you can also keyframe anything. So if they are moving a lot, you can try to keyframe that fill point back over to where you need. And with a little bit of adjustment, you may be able to get away with using the paint bucket tool for really simple, quick, or small objects that you're masking out where the clip is quite suitable. But once we start getting into something with a lot more mo movement, like this second scene, it might not work. In this case, we can take a more manual approach. So let me remove this paint bucket tool and delete it from the effects control panel of this clip. And a more manual way to do this would be to mask. So under the opacity section, if you click on the pen tool and begin on the first frame that you want to begin, you can actually click and draw out a mask outline exactly around where you need. You might have to zoom in a little bit, but with this method, you can get in as close as you want and you don't and you won't have to worry about the automatic color detection or rely on that. So this method is going to take more time, it's more tedious. Once you do create a complete shape masked out, you can see there's some adjustments that you can make such as the feathering amount or the expansion of the mask. However, that's just one frame that you've completed and you'll have to click this stopwatch icon, add a keyframe and then really go frame by frame almost and in the program window highlight the mask and go through every frame or so and adjust the mask to the proper position so on the plus side we are only kind of working within this half rectangle worth of space here it's the only part that will be visible so we don't have to be perfect on the toes or the top of the head but you could see this could get quite tedious and this is where something like After Effects is a bit better suited for the job. So if you're only limited to Premiere or another program that has masking options like that, you can do it by hand and just keyframe it. But if you do have After Effects, there's an automatic way to keyframe such a mask, which is called rotoscoping. 
So what I'll do is delete this mask and we're actually gonna right click on the clip and replace it with an After Effects composition. It's gonna ask you to save this After Effects composition uh, wherever you want, and then it'll open up your clip in After Effects. Now, if you want, you could just have started in After Effects from the beginning. If you knew, you're going to have to go the rotoscoping route. But if you're working in between both programs, you can do it with that dynamic linking feature. But if we wanted to mask in After Effects, we can actually head up to the top of the toolbar, click this Roto Brush tool. I'll open my Brushes panel on the right-hand side too, so we can adjust the size of the brush and whatnot. And then I'll double click on my layer that I'm working on and you should see the little roto brush pop up. It's a green little brush. Here I can paint in the sections that I want After Effects to try to mask out and you see it does a pretty good job. This depends on the contrast and the lines in your clip, but it detects those edges and motion and tries to mask out the person. Additionally, if you kind of overreached a little bit, you can hold option on your keyboard you'll see the brush turn red, and you can tell After Effects what not to include. So you can kind of create a boundary around the selection. And on the little timeline here, you can stretch out this gray arrow to as long as you need, and then click the Freeze button. This will go through frame by frame, so you don't have to do it by hand, and it will try to create a mask that goes along with the motion. So you see in cases where the camera's just zooming, it does a perfect job, like here around her lower body, her arms and hair flinging around. Sometimes After Effects might get a little confused, mess up. So you can wait for it to finish or click stop. But if I go to any moment where I feel like After Effects messed up a little bit or is missing something, I can try to give it a little bit more information. Now I do have to unfreeze the clip before I do anything. So I'll unfreeze it and then I can give After Effects a little bit more information like, hey, you forgot the arms here. And I can go through and kind of just help it along, hold its hand a little bit, but it still wouldn't be as tedious as doing it by hand. So from there, I can freeze it again. It'll go back with that new information. Again, try to create a mask. And once it's done in the effects control panel, you do have some options for feathering or not feathering, or just slightly adjusting the edge of the boundary or the clip. And on the bottom here, you can toggle the alpha on or off. So in different ways in this way, I just want her because we have the background layer back over in Premiere. So once I'm done, I'll close this and just save it. And that After Effects composition will automatically update in Premiere. So if you did everything correctly, you should see the saved clip update in Premiere Pro with your changes reflected. And in this case, we have the rotoscoped outline. So this is a bit more of an involved example because she's moving and dancing pretty quickly. However, with those methods, you can try to approach most any clip, whether it's a quick one that you can do automatically with something like keying or the paint bucket fill, or if it's something that you might have to take more manually or roto brush it or rotoscope it out. So this is a topic I've covered a few times before on my channel as well. If you wanna check out tutorials on how to do this in Photoshop, or another example of doing this in After Effects or Premiere Pro, I'll link to some of those. You can subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my new videos and follow me on social media at Justin Odisho to keep in touch with me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.